there was a shift of blame towards Robin that got to the point where it was making me so angry that I was getting to the point where if you had a complaint about her, I'd be like, shut up, I would punch you in the mouth. You know, I, I was getting sick of the complaints. Cody talks about how he wanted to punch his wives and kids in the face if they even dared to talk about Robin. Psycho! It's Mary! It's <laughs> up a, Rachel and the light! Lord of gets worse each time. Oh, Share. subscribe. Oh, and comment down below, y'all, because we about to get into all the yakbas mm, today. Let's get into the yakba. Yes, mm. oh, because of what Cody, like, I don't know what's actually wrong with this man. You know. Like the most and please, most Michael T. Miss me with oh he has no feet up. That man knows exactly what he's saying, and he. Mm. I just feel oh, like most civilized human beings who have a brain will think and filter their words yeah. before they actually say them. Because well, you have to look the at face. the sense exactly at, like. Are these the children and the women? No, like, he said all of them. Girl. All of them, he said. It might be this Because who will be saying something bad about them? Isn't it your children and the women? It might be this. It's really, because even the Kelsey talked about it. She said, Cody thinks that if you even mention them, you're talking bad about them. So it's not even you say what you, with the context of what you're saying, but it's the fact that you even mentioned them. Like he's on guard. And it might be as for you to say that on national TV and say that you were so angry like you were so filled with rage that you would want to punch anybody in the face who dared mention your favorite wife do you hear yourself but isn't this what everybody has been talking about that how he only sees her perspective isn't that what they were saying all this time so she they couldn't talk, even talk to you i just want to talk about the violence the violence in the language so like you're that know. enraged that somebody dared to bring a concern to you about your wife you're in a polygamous family How worried people are going to have concerns if you do not want anybody to have a voice you should have taken yourself like i, I don't know you were able to take it's yourself it's not the culture it's not the culture of the polygamist to have defection and their defection meaning the wives children Whatever daddy said, go. Daddy said, I'm going to come get 2,400 wives. I'm getting that. Lord have mercy. You say nothing. It does not matter whether it's only one clothes you have to wear for the rest of your life. Whether I can afford it or not. This is a spiritual thing that I am going through. Like that crazy guy who married the 80-something women, including like underage girls. Yeah, Remember that's that Jesse Warren. Yeah. But you know what also like, I, and I, I think this is this culture. It's just it's the culture. Like the father is the center, he's the head, right? And there's no concern for the, the children and the wives. It's kinda like the wives are used to work, get the money and all that stuff. The children are used to, I don't know, till the farm and, 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 and stuff like that. It's like they're used for what they can get to make daddy's life okay right right and you stay in your sacred loneliness Whatever after that means. i deem <laughs> that i don't really need you anymore because i got 10 other women to please then you should be happy in your sacred loneliness for the rest of your life but you stay in this in this in this space and if you ever feel sad about something you should kind of like keep that to yourself and keep sweet smile through your tears kind of thing and i guess the children are not ever allowed to cry yeah and if they do or if they are not keeping sweet like their mothers then um you're shunned or you're punished so it's the culture that they're in and, and even though this was on television and stuff like that the way Cody, you're, you're misbehaving. Because this whole thing that he's doing is such a misbehavior. Yeah. From who he used to be. Like this man, like, I was like, oh, he's so helpful. You know, like the, the way we used to see Cody. There has been, we have looked at this man. There's been a serious decline. A decline. And Character. I mean, the wives keep on saying he has really changed. I just wonder, is this who he was? 
all this time. And we, what we had before was the fake Cody because he was poor and he hated poverty and he needed this women to kind of keep his nose above the water. Yeah. But as soon as he was soaring on the money front, the real Cody has shown up. Yeah, because my thing, I also remember so him being very, there was some weird thing he did that Peyton talked about, whatever. I think he said what happened was the kids were on these bunk beds. Okay. And one of the bunk beds fell down. And I think I think it had fallen on a child who was underneath the bunk bed. Yeah. Instead of hey, instead of Cody, I don't even know if he checked on the child. Yeah. Instead of Cody checking on the child, maybe uh -huh. taking the child to the hospital. Yeah. Make sure it was fine. Right. Cody decides to throw a temper tantrum and breaks up the whole entire bed set yeah. and destroys the furniture. You see, that's like, violence. Like the common it's sense. Like violence. Just it. Like the. It's just like um, the common sense elevator. Don't even leave the damn garage. Matter of fact, it goes down. It don't yeah. even go up. It go down. The underground. <laughs> Like uh, yeah, I mean, and as for me, I know my Kelty says, "Oh, my dad will never," but it seems to me that Cody has been showing violence to this family. Like he'll do enough, but he won't go over the line. Right. Over okay. The edge. So I'm not gonna actually punch you in the face. But I'll test. But you. I will let you know that I was if thinking you it. You pass this line. I will do it. I am capable. Because why do you? Why do you do that and, and break like down the bed and threat, hit though. it? Like, it is a Isn't threat. Isn't it a subtle threat that he did? He did it on national TV. Like, if he you guys come threat. to me and you're still talking about Robin, this is how I used to feel. Yeah. You don't know if I still feel like this, though. But you know something when else. When I was around I, you know for you what I wonder, do what I, And I don't know if Peyton will remember. I wonder what conversation they were having when the bed broke. You see what I'm saying? Maybe they were trying to talk to him about something that maybe they didn't agree with him about. about. Yeah. Maybe it was about wrong. And then this bed broke and he takes that opportunity to totally like decimate and bang this bed, kinda like showing his rage. Yeah. But letting them know it's really for that conversation that they were just having. I just wonder what conversation were they having, these boys. Oh poor Peyton when that bed actually... broke. But he See, like traumatized probably traumatized him no poor Peyton he actually because he's so they're so messed up in the head from being with this man as their father Peyton thought it was armed but like dad he he just protected us so much like he was so loving like he broke a whole bedroom set after a bunk bed fell on them what are you at what a normal person acts are you okay how are you doing and then after that do you, know you get angry again and, and then is, break the bed I will blame Christine because when, when they came and explained it to Christine, Christine says, oh. Well, Christine don't know no better. She, well, she was also, she what, was 18, an abused 19? woman. Well, I'm sorry, She listen. herself was an abused woman. So it's like, I have to change the narrative. You know how Christine said she took their, their, their relationship and preserved it and put it over here? She has been trying to preserve the relationship of these children. Yeah. Oh, but I'm sorry. She if recognizes I was the violence. He's really so protective. No, but my thing is, like, if you're, like, 19, 20, 21, like, mm -hmm. I can't, listen, if I told, if I got married when I was 19 or 20, I can't say that I would have chosen the, the right man. Because I right. still had him, like, like now really that I'm 25, I right. definitely would have chosen better, right? Maybe someone but, different. like, yeah. you don't get the wisdom, you don't understand what all that stuff is. Yeah, so she would not have known all the little things that Cody was really doing or whatever. Yeah, but I do yeah, think I get it. maybe she would have thought, oh, my big, strong, masculine man, he beat up the bunk bed that broke on our child. I don't know what the hell. <laughs> but, Is it kind of the same kind of thing what one of my cousins was like? Tony, he's just going to protect me. I mean, yeah. it's so cute because really, when you're in your 20s, really, okay? We get it. We get it. And it's okay. It's I think okay. it's good to be that way in your twenties. You know what I'm saying? They have the rest of their lives to be cynical, right? And yeah. and look with one eye like this. So I think it's okay. It's alright. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. That way. That's our opinion on this whole but thing. But yeah, Cody has been violent for a long time. I mean, look at what Gwen said, and he has made these children unsafe. And made it feel as though like this is something that's okay. Yeah. That, you know, like Gwendolyn, right? He knows she doesn't like to be thrown up. 
So any time that she's being herself, her lively self, it's like you're teaching a child not to be themselves. Yeah. As soon as she's lively and bubbly and just who she is, he takes her and he throws her off. And you know that feeling like you get like when you're on a roller coaster? Oh, I hate roller coasters. And that dip. And I hate that feeling. I'm scared. You know, and he does that, kind of shocks her into not saying anything. It's kind of like, it's, I don't know. I I just don't know. So I feel like that's where Christine, it's like, and we do that as, you know, wives. I did it. And you try to protect our men. I try to, I try to, um make up stories to kind of make it seem like oh it was actually this is what it meant you know try to like it oh this is what it meant you know mm, smiling like some oh my god why the hell am i here <laughs> you know but so i i i i that's that's the only thing right because I, I just played christine but you know what can you do when you're an abused woman you're in this situation you're in this polygamous situation you're trying to get along to kind of stay along with the family yeah and this kind of culture where um it's very you know male centered right the man is like the god in our lives it's like man i don't even know where god comes into this whole thing because the man is telling you that this is what God says, right? So the man really is the God. He, you can only get to God through him. Yeah, he's the conduit, right, for you to get to God and the children too. And you gotta make sure the kids are in line, right, from whatever he says. Uh, I'm sorry, last time I checked, I don't have to go through anybody to get to God because God is always on call. You just have to put your hands out and pray. But that's, and not, that's, not, that's not the culture here, so. Unfortunately. I, I see it, I don't mean, you know, Anyway, yeah. it's so, very so, so that's just that's just how it is. I mean, do you guys see what it is? Um, and it, what else do you guys think about this whole thing? You yeah. know, it's just, in, in a culture like this, it's so hard for the women and the children to win. It just really is. Yeah, it's y'all. Really is. But it's Mary and Alma. We invite you guys to like, subscribe, and comment down below.